Hello and welcome to Verbling. Hi there, I'm Teacher Oakley. And in this class, we are going to practice speaking English through the use of uh, transitions and passive voice to do process explanation. We're going to take turns explaining a very simple process, uh, anything you really want to do, how to change a light bulb, how to change the batteries in your flashlights, uh, how to brush your teeth, it doesn't really matter. Um, we're going to explain a very simple process and gonna, we're going to try to concentrate on using good English. We're going to try to concentrate on using passive structures. The toothpaste is put on uh, the toothbrush by squeezing the toothpaste tube from the bottom. Okay, after that, we're also going to be trying, uh, I'm, I'm going to be encouraging you to use transitionals, uh, signal words and phrases, discourse markers, whatever you'd like to call them. Uh, such as, and then, uh, after that, uh, at the same time, uh, meanwhile, all these kinds of time indicators and indicators, uh, indicators of sequence and chronological order. Anyway, uh, that's what we're going to do, and that's what we're concentrating on. And uh, we're going to get started right after I welcome some students here to the Verbling class. Hello, Luo. Yes, hey. hello, Ki. Nice to see you again. How have you been these days? It's been a very busy week, Luo. How have you been this week? Last week, my wife went to the uh, hospital, so I was there a company uh, to look after her. Yeah. Ah, I see. Uh, is she okay? Yes, she uh, uh, better and better. Good. Okay. Well, uh, my daughter's been in the hospital all week, actually. Um, really? Oh. Yeah. Really hope. Yeah. I hope. So. I hope she can recover soon. Yeah. I hope. She, I'm. My fingers are crossed. I hope she's coming home today. Actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so that's tough, Luau. I know, I know it's tough. That's a tough thing. So I, I wish your wife the speediest of recoveries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, Luau, it's good to see you. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. uh, hello, Danilo. Hi, Danilo. How are you today, Danilo? Okay. Well, Danilo, when you can, try to say hello. Unmute yourself and say hello so I know that uh, I can talk to you. Uh, uh, hello, Gre Gregors? Actually, Greg. Call me Greg. Call you Greg. All right. Hello. Hi, Greg. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. And how are you? Uh, all things considered, I'm okay. Thank you very much. Welcome to the class. Uh, I'd also like to welcome Heidi. Hello, Heidi. Hello. Hi. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Uh, I'd also like to welcome Hussam. Hussam? Hi. Nice to share. Is it uh, Hussam? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, welcome to the class, Hussam. Where are you yeah. from? I'm from Morocco. Ah, Morocco, excellent. Uh, okay, Morocco. Must be very, very early in the morning there. Yeah. What time is it? It's uh, 2 a.m. 2 a.m., yeah, in the middle of the night. Okay. <laughs> um, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, Thank you for asking. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, again, uh, the idea here is to, it's up to you guys, I'd like you to pick a simple process, it can be something as simple as how to tie a tie, how to tie your shoes, 
how to change a light bulb, how to put f batteries in a flashlight, how to make an omelet, how to cook noodles. doesn't really matter what you're talking about. Um, how to hang a door, uh, how to clean a fan, I don't really care. But uh, how to make a bed, there's several ideas. But uh, the thing I want you to concentrate on mostly is using Danilo, please try to refrain from muting me. You could unmute yourself and say hello. That would be terrific. Uh, in any case, I want you to concentrate on using uh, chronological time indi indicators uh, after five minutes, after that, um, next, <laughs> you know, uh, after a while. Uh, any of those kinds of expressions to keep the time sequence because a process obviously when you tie your shoes you do one thing and then you do something else and after that try as you're doing this uh, try not to use and then and then and then and then try not to use the same one over and over okay like uh, to be frank with you, if you do that when you're speaking, it sounds a little bit annoying. <laughs> so try to avoid that. Try to use different, uh, different time se sequence indicators. If you can, if you're able to, um, I encourage you to also attempt to use the passive voice. Um, passive is when you say... Uh, uh, when the subject, instead of the normal active sentence where the subject does an action to the object, uh, in fact, something is happening to the subject. So, okay, I, I just mentioned, okay, the toothpaste is put on the, tooth, uh, the toothbrush. Okay, um, well, no, that... Okay, yeah, all right. Uh, next, the eggs are folded into the pan. Okay, things like that. Uh, using the verb to be and then uh, and then the verb. Uh, okay, let's get started. Uh, Luo, what would you like to, what process would you like to explain for us? Today. I have no idea. How about you give me a, 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 a subject? What's that? Uh, I, I said I have no idea what I, what I want to explain, so <laughs> how about you give me a subject? Oh my gosh. Uh, oh dear. Uh, are you, well, are you much of a cook? No. no. How about cleaner? Do you make the bed? Do you uh, wash the dishes? Do you clean out the refrigerator? Sometimes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> How to clean the toilet? In five uh, fun and exciting steps. <laughs> clean toilet. Clean toilet. First, firstly, you should uh, okay. push the push the uh, wash button. Um, <laughs> I don't know, and uh, I bought some the clean clean um, some something for clean the toilet uh, in the bottle, and uh, you uh, squeeze it out and to spread it all uh, all the toilet in the toilet, and uh, there are some places hiding in the toilet on the uh, under the top of the uh, which you sit, and it's hard to clean. And uh, the bot, uh, I, I said I bought a um, uh, clean, clean. How to say that? Um, uh, cleaning solution. Something. Cleaning water in the uh, in a bottle. I I don't know how to uh, explain that. And uh, you screen it out to uh, on, uh, in s somewhere under the under where, where, where you sit, in, and and um, it's blue and. Um, uh, it's blue and uh, could, to, could help you to clean the toilet and you uh, wash the toilet again. Uh, wait, wait for 10 minutes after, probably. Um, that's the whole procedure, I think, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
Well, that was interesting. Uh, okay, uh, a little related vocabulary to your toilet. Well, we all can learn vocabulary related to everything. I guess this is practical. Uh, uh, you flush the toilet, or uh, okay, when there's a little handle, or sometimes it's a button, or old-fashioned a pull a chain, whatever it is. In any case, uh, when the water rushes through the toilet and self cleans itself, you're flushing the toilet. However you do it, um, you could turn the handle, push the button, whatever, whatever, and flush the toilet. Uh, the other thing is. Uh, so Sometimes commonly, like uh, the soap, the type of soap you use for bathrooms or kitchen counters or things like that, sometimes we just simply call it cleaner or cleaning solution or uh, cleaning soap we use to clean things with. <laughs> yeah, Luo, <laughs> you beat me to the punch. Sometimes called detergent, particularly... Uh, we say laundry detergent to clean clothes, and we say uh, dish detergent to wash the dishes. Uh, okay, um, but usually things we clean, uh, I don't know, you spray on or the, the stuff you, you squeeze into the toilet bowl, usually it's just cleaner, mm, bathroom cleaner. Okay. Usually, with these these words, we designate what they are: bathroom cleaner, kitchen cleaner, wherever it's supposed to be used. Uh, okay. Well, oh, ni nice try. Thanks for getting us started. Uh, it's it's too hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is actually a challenging exercise. More challenging, it seems quite simple at first, uh, and the challenge is to stay organized. Th think about it as steps. Um, uh, you know, think about saying uh, the first step is to, after that, and next, and then finally, okay, I uh, really encourage you to try using those first, and then second, or somehow sequence the steps involved. Because if you just jumble all, and you, you flush the toilet, and you rinse the toilet, and you put the soap in, and you scrub it, and then the uh, rinse it again, it sounds like, well, if you don't use and then, uh, it sounds like you're supposed to do everything at once, which of course would be a big mess in the bathroom. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Well, you got us started, though, <laughs> and in a fine way. Thanks, Will. Uh, Danilo, are, are you uh, up and running? Are, are you audio equipped? Um, uh, can you hear me? Yes, no? I can. It's loud and clear. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Okay, I'm sorry. I was having uh, trouble it's here. Okay. Not a problem. Uh, nice talk to everyone. Uh, good evening. Um, let me see. I was trying to, uh, to explain how to do uh, banana uh, bread. One thing banana that I, bread. Oh. Yeah, it's like a banana pizza, you know. Um, no. No. Banana pizza. <laughs> yeah, in Brazil is uh, is really common. It's really yeah. common. Yes, uh, and uh, so I, I, I have I had the idea to turn the banana pizza into a banana bread. It is easy for me to do that. So uh, first of all, you have to uh, you have to, uh, you will need a bread, uh, cheese, uh, cream, and banana. And uh, so first of all, you have to cut the bread the bread, and um, uh, you have to second you have to uh, put the cream, uh, and then you uh, cut the bananas. You put the ba you put the bananas into the bread, and after a uh, third, you have to add sugar and cinnamon. Uh, so 
uh, finally, you just uh, close the bread, bread and put uh, at the oven. You know, um, so uh, I think it's a uh, delicious, uh, uh, delicious breakfast. You know, with orange juice. Okay. Now, hang on. I have a couple questions. Um, wait, you put what do you put on the bread? Cream cheese? Yes, cream, cream cheese. Cream cheese. Ah, cream yeah. cheese. Okay. Yes, and banana and cinnamon and sugar. Got it. Uh, okay, yeah. now. Now, okay, it sounds delicious. But uh, wait a second. Now, Danilo. If my ears did not deceive me, I heard you say that you throw the bread at the oven. <laughs> <laughs> While that sounds like a lot of fun, it also sounds quite messy. Um, I think what you meant is you throw the bread in the oven, right? Because we throw at, we're going to throw, we're attempting to hit something. Okay. You know? Usually in an aggressive or violent manner. If I throw a, if I throw a ball for a dog, I want the dog to catch it. If I throw a ball to a dog, the dog is far away, so I want the ball to travel from me to the dog. If I throw a ball at the dog, I'm trying to hit the dog and cause okay. pain. So I get it. If I'm throwing a banana pizza at the oven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. How long do you cook it for? That's the one thing. And what temperature? Uh, the medium, medium temperature. Okay. For about how long? Uh, five minutes. Five minutes. Nice. That's it. Okay. All right. I, I, you know, I this I feel stupid. I've never tried this before. I'm gonna try it. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. You know what? You know would be good on it. Have you, um, maybe this sounds weird, have you ever had, Danilo, uh, I, I've had, now maybe this sounds weird to you, uh, a toasted banana and bacon and peanut butter sandwich. Peanut butter, bacon, and banana. Surprisingly uh, delicious. Yes, I think it, I think it's fine. I I love banana with everything. So and <laughs> bacon is delicious. So nice combination, right? You try that one out. Hey, we're sharing recipes. Wow, I'm getting hungry, Daniela. Th thanks. That was a very good job. All right. Uh, first of <laughs> all, you. I heard I heard the transitions. First of all, uh, first of all, you will need uh, that's very good in process explanation to start out with whatever tools or ingredients or um, whatever you're going to need. So great, um, terrific, and nice job using transitions first of all after that or second and then after that. Finally, I heard. Good job, Danilo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. I'm glad you picked that. I thought you might uh, decide to describe how to enter the Verbling Hangout. <laughs> uh, Great okay. job, great job, Daniel. Thank you, uh, Greg. Yes. Uh, what are you gonna explain for us? Uh, that will be very trivial because this is the only thing that I can think of right now. So, uh, how to open the first DVD movie on your computer? I add some co couple extra stuff. Okay. No, that's cool. Okay. At the beginning, uh, you you should. Uh, you have to turn off, turn on the computer. Wait when the operating system will be ready. Next, uh, try to locate the menu of the on the on your operating system and try to find multimedia field, or maybe it will be just the just the button with the name <laughs> applications. When you do it, uh, just try to find the correct application. It could the name of the application it can be DVD player, M player, media player, and stuff like that. So just try to find this application. If you cannot locate the application, um, try to locate the software manager or maybe App Store or maybe 
application which helps you to install additional software on your computer if if you find the right application. If uh, you know, if you find this application, try to find in the search bar the name of the application. Um, so just uh, you can write DVD player, and you s you will see the list of the application. Uh, try to press button install close to the name of the application. Wait a couple of minutes. After a couple of um, minutes, when the you see the information that the process of the installation was completed. You can locate, uh, remember the name of the application, press the uh, field there with the list of the application, choose the application, and uh, when the application uh, is running, uh, when the application was run, um, you have to, you know, press locate, uh, localize, locate the eject uh, button on your keyboard. So press the uh, eject button, you know, and wait when you see the tray of the um, DVD drive coming out from the um, DVD drive, put on the DVD uh, movie to the drive, and you have to a little bit push the tray to inside of the um, DVD drive. Next thing, uh, when the when if you see the information that you know the movie cannot be played, you will have to go back to the application manager or the uh, software manager, there are different names, it could be App Store, it could be Windows Market and stuff like that. And next, try to type the um, codec DVD, codec DVD, try to locate the uh, uh, codecs for the, your DVD, player, DVD application, press the look for the information that, you know, this specific codec will help you to play DVD movies, so just press enter, wait a couple of seconds, and when the application, uh, when you see the field, uh, the community, uh, the field with the information that, that the process was uh, finished, you can just go back to the application, or you have to rerun the program, and when the, run the application, once again, DVD, your DVD player application, you know, you see the fields, couple of fields, so we see the fits with the options. So you can change the size of the screen, you can change the volume, or you can decide if you can um, turn on or turn off captions. When you decided to change the option, just accept that, click go back. And finally, just play the field play play movie. To enjoy the to and to enjoy you know what to start watching a movie and enjoy it. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that was pretty good. You know your stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, wow. There's a manual somewhere. Uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I I have a chance to but you I know, know. Uh, to just uh, quite. Nothing. <laughs> Quite exotic operating system, so sometimes it is hard. Okay. Uh, hang on. Um, hang on. I, can you say something? I, I think I pulled my jack yes. out. Yes. You hear me right now? Ah, there we go. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Let me give you a little feedback. Yeah, overall, definitely. okay, overall, you know, all right, well, clearly you know your stuff and you had all the steps. One thing that would really help understanding, frankly, is a little more intonation. Uh, intonation to indicate that, that you're actually, first of all, okay, after that, uh, da da da, we do a, there's a little bit of a, I can't really say it's an intonation pattern, but we when we uh, are monotony, yeah, uh, and a higher pitch to indicate uh, the next step is to blah 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 blah. We uh, this is the sort of a thing we do when we um, when we're explaining a process. After that, carefully remove the paper. Next. So a little, uh, two things, and then intonation with a little rise when you use one of these transition markers or, you know, signal phrases, and a little pause. 
Um, to be honest, when you're doing steps, it's a good idea to just, not a long pause or anything, but just between each step to sort of give a little pause to let that sink into my tired old brain. Um, it would be very helpful so I could follow along. Uh, you know your material so well, you were just steadily marching onwards, and I'm, my, my old, tired, just woke up brain couldn't <laughs> couldn't keep up with you, to be honest. Partly my problem, but a little intonation and ro drop and rise so I could follow. First step is carefully. Oh, I so I should so just not make it boring. I should mm, think about it. Will be interesting when you see this problem. I should uh, you know say it in the way that I actually. If there's a problem with the missing codex. I should say, it. if there's a missing codec, you should do it too. Just this and this, and later. If it doesn't work, something like that. Something just like that, in fact. Yes, that's exactly. You, you got it. You, you understand exactly what I'm trying to tell you. Thank you. Yes, that's exactly what I would uh, hope for. That, and that would, believe it or not, that helps the listener in understanding. Um, not that it may, it's not even that it makes it more exciting or, or interesting. It makes it easier to understand for a native speaker. They're used to a kind of a, well, a little bit, uh, to be honest, a little bit of a sing-songy intonation when they're having step-by-step -step instructions given to them. Um, I was thinking that I make it just shorter, just to make it that like you know, I see in the books, just say it. Locate the folder, do copy the uh, files later, open the terminal. Um, and we did when actually this is the situation when I know it should be correct when we actually stop thinking about you or things like um, pronouns and it will be more like a commands. Uh, yeah, like you're talking in bullet points. Yes. Um, well, I mean, that is one technique, but you still have the intonation factor, and when you use, like, the bullet point approach, uh, you're usually, like, commands. I understand what you're saying. Normally, you'd be speaking in passive voice a lot. Next, the disk is inserted into the drive. After that, uh, something is done. The codex button is pushed, or the uh, eject button is pushed. Uh, and and they usually go together. This style that you're talking about, because it's very mechanical. It's very formal, actually. This kind of style is considered to be more formal and mechanical, and generally uses a lot more passive voice. I'm not saying right or wrong. I mean, you can do. It's okay to pr explain a process in a conversational style. It's okay to do it more like commands. I mean. Uh, if you were in the military, you know, your drill sergeant is not going to speak to you conversationally. Okay, soldiers, additionally, I would like you to turn around. You know, they, <laughs> no. they, don't, they don't do that, do they? No. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there's nothing wrong with either style, really. Uh, okay. A couple other little additional points. Uh you were saying um, something about what the uh, the name of uh, something could be, and you gave a couple suggestions, which is great, by the way. Uh, but then you said it's called this or that or stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it's well, that's, well. That's not stuff because it's not an object. But you can similarly say or something like that. It's called A or B or something like that. That's perfectly okay. That's normal, and, and very normal English. Um, but you're not referring to, like, a, an object, so you wouldn't say stuff like that. Something like that is fine. Um, you, you did use transitions, and you used... Uh, I, I like the time indicator and duration indicators. Duration of time. After two minutes, after a few seconds... 
Uh, okay, after the computer what, what, uh, powers up, that's, that's good. Yeah. I, I, just making a note for the rest of the students who are trying this, that's a really good thing to do, to explain time indicate uh, time duration. Like uh, Danilo and his and his uh, pizza bread, I was I was looking for a little duration. How how long do I put the pizza in there for? Um, also, Greg, pronunciation eject 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 better yeah. Uh, uh, it's now and uh, one last thing, which not not really not really wrong. Um, like when you're indicating adjusting the settings for volume and the size of the display and all that, you, and you said you can decide if you want um, captions or not. Uh, it's not really wrong to use if, but uh, I just want to point out in a in a process explanation where um, you're you have optional options. We often use weather. Decide whether you would like uh, uh, captions oh, yeah, or not. Right. Just a little more normal in a in a process explanation. If it yeah. isn't wrong, there's nothing particularly. It's correct grammar and everything, but okay. But uh, thanks, Greg. I hope thanks. I was able to give you some good feedback. Yeah. Great job. Uh, okay, you guys are getting uh, better and better and better. Uh, Heidi. Heidi? Yes. Are you there? Hi. What would you like to explain to us? Explain what about how to cook sashimi. Oh. You guys are trying to make me hungry today, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. If, okay. you, if you make sashimi uh, of tuna, it is. You go to the supermarket, uh, they are selling already um, cut. Uh, then um, I want to explain about the sashimi from sea beam. Sea beam is, a, we call it Thai. Thai is a very uh, happy fish in Japan. <laughs> um, Thai is about 30 centimeters. So we, we need to buy one, uh, one CB from supermarket or uh, fish vendors at first. Then I, I start to cook. The first you need to remove head and tail. In that case, uh, we need to use two or kind of uh, kitchen knife knives. One is a, we call it deba bojo. Deba deba is a thick and strong, uh, powerful uh, knife. And next is a sashimi knife. It's thin and long, like a sword. At first, we use deba. Then cut off the head and the tail. Then um, second, we need to remove the skin. At first, we need to cut uh, a little the skin and very close the tail. Then after that, we need to remove the skin with my hand. Uh, pull out uh, very strongly. If uh, the, uh, the skin is uh, sticky, uh, then uh, we need to use cross, kitten cloth to grab the skin. Then after removing, uh, we need to um, remove the bone, like backbone. If, if we uh, uh, what, uh, <laughs> compare to humankind, uh, kind of backbone, then uh, at first, we need to put the uh, kitty knife, deba, very close to the head. Then uh, you need to cut, cut off the meat along with uh, along to the bone. Then next, you reverse the fish. Then cut the um, the same same way uh, to remove the bone. Then uh, you can uh, separate. Uh, three pieces of uh, meat, one is uh, uh, two meat and one is bone. You can use the bone to uh, boil the vegetables or something or a miso soup, very delicious. <laughs> and then um, I need to, we need to cut uh, the meat uh, in two pieces. 
why the belly side, why the back side. Then uh, belly side is uh, a little smell. Then uh, the back side is very delicious. Then after that, you need to cut. Uh, finally, you need to cut off the mouthful side. Then put on the dish. Offer to others. <laughs> Yeah. Garnish as desired. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, you know, I used to be a chef. Uh, Heidi, I have to say, uh, you know how to butcher fish. <laughs> um, obviously. That was quite clear to me. Of course, I have experience with this, but it was actually quite clear to me. And obviously, Heidi knows how to butcher fish. And that's the what she's talking about when she's talking about cutting up the fish and removing the bones we can say butcher fish or dress all right <laughs> so when somebody says oh, we need to dress the fish they don't mean that you need to put pants on the fish they mean <laughs> they mean you need to remove the skin and remove the bones and uh, prepare the meat okay uh, that was very good uh, and uh, it was pretty clear the process I got uh, transition words next after that and then um, I even liked uh, when you have difficulty removing the skin, you can use a, a piece of a kitchen cloth to help pull it. Great. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I know all about that. Okay. A couple, an uh, observation and a question, just follow-up question. Happy Fish, is it CV or CB? C-Beam. Beam. C-Beam? Yes, B E A M. E B. I want to try that. I don't, uh, I don't it has not... black There's... color, but after boiling, it changed to red color. Ah, uh, really? Mm hmm. Okay. This is something I don't really. I think I've eaten it in a Japanese restaurant, but I don't think I have ever prepared it before, ever, in my life, so I really want to. Okay, and then uh, just another observation, just an observation, um, talking about knives, there's different kitchen knives, I just find this interesting. The big, thick, kind of looks like a square or a rectangle, in English we call that a butcher's knife. Oh, butcher knife. <laughs> yeah, in, in English. Mm. Um, and the long, thin knife, which is yeah. really long, is a slicer. But the one that's really skinny but comes to a point. Yeah, like actually, a sword. Yeah, we actually call that a, but it's really long. We call that a fish knife, actually. Mm. We call it a sashimi knife. Okay, what it's used for. Mm. Very practical. In English, uh, knives are actually practical and make sense. They're, they're named basically what they're used for. The one that's with a very, which is also very thin and comes to a point, but it's a lot stronger, not so flexible, because mm -hmm. you use it for meat, for like beef and pork, uh, is called a boning knife, because mm -hmm. you use it to cut the bones out of big things, chicken or beef or whatever. Um, it's interesting. And then the, the pretty heavy triangle knife, which you use for vegetables, you know, to mm. dice and chop vegetables. We call that a French knife, actually. That's the one that's a little well, weird. Well, they have a lot of knives in your house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we do. We, we do have a lot of knives. I have a lot of knives, actually. People must... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Be, being that I was a chef, your knives are your tools. It's like a carpenter has a hammer and a saw. and uh, you, you know, a carpenter wears a belt with all his tools. Sometimes uh, many chefs in America, at least, they carry their knives around like they're like a carpenter carries tools, like an electrician, like any tradesman carries tools. I remember getting some very strange looks from people. <laughs> He's got a big bag of knives, and they're obviously knives. <laughs> what is that man doing? Is he a maniac? But anyway, uh, yeah, I have a lot of knives, and there's a small knife paring knife that used to peel apples and mm, things yeah. like that. Fru fruit yeah. knife. <laughs> fruit knife, you call it? Okay. Okay, thanks, Heidi. I'm going to try. I have to try now. 
I have all things kind of. I have many busy things to do on my day off. Find some sea beam, make some banana pizza, watch a DVD, and clean my toilet. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna have a busy day off. Oh boy. Uh, okay. Thanks, Heidi. That was really, really good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elise. Welcome to the class. Hello, Elise. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. Yeah, I'm fine. How about you? Uh, so far, so good. I've just started my day, but yeah, I heard something. You will, you will have a busy day today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Elise, have you been watching the class? Do you know what we're doing here? Uh, I just came back from work. Uh, are ah. you explaining the process? Or exactly. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Precisely. And we're kind of trying to concentrate on um, using signal words or signal phrases, discourse markers. Uh, when we uh, add another, we're talking about steps or chronological order in a process. So first, uh, after that, next, and then. Okay. Um, using words like that, maybe um, to show uh, um, a span sequence. of time. sequence after five minutes, things like mm. that. Um, at the same time, maybe you'll have to do two things at the same time, um, simultaneously at the same time. Mm. Whatever, whatever. Uh, we're uh, that's what we're trying to do. So process. And using our discourse markers. Okay. So, uh, are you ready to give it a try? Uh, no problem. Great. What would you like to explain to us? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, no picture, nothing. I just think anything to make to just uh, you know make a story. Use well, all these words. I, as an example, uh, Luau explained how to clean a toilet. Uh, Danilo, <laughs> who who got kicked who lost his connection explained how to make banana pizza. Um, Greg explained how to load a DV load and play a DVD in your computer. Heidi explained how to make uh, sea beam sashimi. That was really good. Um, so cook something, clean something, make something, whatever you'd okay. like. Okay. And uh, can I um, share how to make a dish? You know, it's called steam saba, steam fish, probably steam any fish, any kind of fish. Okay. Okay. Firstly, um, uh, I have to go to the supermarket to choose the live, choose to choose live fish. Then meanwhile, I have to buy some, you know, like garlic, gingers, uh, all these, you know, uh, for for, uh, for the use. Okay. Uh, okay, start from the kitchen. Firstly, I have to uh, clean the fish. You know, have to wash properly. Make sure, uh, you know, make sure it's uh, clean. Then, yeah, in Singapore, you really all this fish is, you know, it's already cute in the supermarket. They already wash for you by bring home. We will wash one more time. Then, meanwhile, uh, after that, I just cut a small cut on two sides of the fish itself. Uh, two sides of the fish itself. Then I will uh, put some ginger, garlic in the fish, you know, cavity, the one, uh, the cavity, which uh, I think everybody understand that. Then after that, I will put um, some uh, soy sauce. Okay. At this, uh, at this moment, don't put any and don't put any um, salt because if you put salt you know to soak to soak the fish later you will taste something like this is not a live fish but a dead fish so just use soy sauce okay uh, after after uh, preparing this uh, fish then we will uh, I will soak it for 15 minutes okay uh, 15 minutes later, then you have to steam the fish. Okay, it takes about 15 minutes to you know to be ready. So it requires total 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, the fish is ready. You can enjoy. Probably you can put some after the fish you know is 
are ready, you can put some cilantro uh, or uh, this, you know, to make sure it looks nicer. <laughs> all this. That's all. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you, how exactly do you steam the fish? Do you ha use a, like a bamboo basket? Do you? Uh, bamboo basket, no, no. Use pot, you know that. Uh, then we have another uh, um, another piece of um, uh, tool. That one I don't know how to call. You know, it's a metal piece, but with lots of hole inside. Lots lots of hole. Okay. Oh. Then put water on and uh, on the put water into the pot. Then put the metal piece. Then put the fi fish over the metal piece. Then use the cover. Usually the pot and the cover come as one set. And inside the metal piece is one set. Ste with steam pot. Steam pot. Steam, steam pot. Steam pot. Sorry. Yes, pot. <laughs> uh, pot. Mm. Okay. That's all. <laughs> uh, okay. Good job uh, describing the process. All right. Good job using transitionals. Uh, okay. Uh, what I would like to share with you, I would like to. Share some, excuse me. Share some vocabulary, uh, okay? When you, all right, you're talking about getting ginger and garlic and things like that. You're going to use, of course, and these are uh, particularly for cooking. These are your uh, ingredients. Yeah, ingredients. I forgot to say uh, ingredients. Now, uh, we use ingredients particularly for food, uh, even processed food. You can talk about ingredients. Okay, um, in fact, they list ingredients on the package of most foods. Um, but be careful of this word. Okay, so, so uh, if you're, I don't know, if you're tuning your car engine, you wouldn't say, well, you need some ingredients. You need spark plugs and fresh oil. You wouldn't use ingredients for that, okay? Uh, you need supplies, maybe, to, to tune up your car engine. Uh, okay, uh, that's one. Uh, when you soak meat or fish or chicken, uh, for a period of time to let the flavor soak in in a liquid uh, so as to flavor the food the that is a verb uh, to marinate you marinate the fish for 15 minutes as you said the liquid you're you're using is the the marinade with a D uh, that's the noun the marinade uh, Okay, and then uh, uh, <laughs> at the end, you would like to use a little cilantro to make it pretty. Okay, uh, now we have a, another word, vocabulary. That's the garnish. A garnish can be a noun or a verb. You, you garnish the food as a verb, or you add the garnish. All right, and uh, okay, uh, specific device with holes that you actually use in a pot it fits the pot and you use it in order to steam things we just call that a steamer in English but uh, something with a lot of holes in it that you like pour spaghetti in that's different I know that's not what you're talking about you're talking about a steamer but um, I find that many students don't know what that thing is what do I pour the what is that thing called I pour spaghetti in to get the water separate the spaghetti from water um, that is called uh, either a strainer or a colander uh, colander specifically is the big bowl shaped one uh, strainer could be just something with a handle to strain out water but anyway a bunch of cooking vocabulary for you might have helped there. Thank you. Okay, but uh, pretty good job. And yeah, by the way, I have one question. Garnish. Uh, garnish is just to put something to make the food look prettier, is it? That's so not, right. not necessarily to be cilantro, can be other things. That's right. I like to, uh, I like to gently skin a tomato 
around and around and around in a circle and then wind it up and it makes a beautiful rose. Uh, okay, <laughs> garnish the food. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, there you go. Yes, that's the idea, correct. Uh, okay. Uh, Luo, I'm, I'm going to go back to you, Luo. Uh, can, I ask, can you ask the question about the last topic? Yeah, sure. Uh, yes, uh, um, I think a couple of days ago I was watching Kings of the Queens, King of the Queens, uh, the serial, and there was a word that was quite confusing for me because I wasn't sure if it is more about the foot or more about the pots. So there was a word fixings. I was thinking fixing. I type it in the dictionary. There was like um, things like additional things that we using to cook, but at the same time it was more something about the pots. So I don't know if it is something like ingredients or can you explain that? Uh, okay. Let me make sure I got the right word. Um, are you are you saying fixings? Yes. F I X I N G S. Ah, uh, my grandmother used this word, Greg. Um, that's very interesting. I, I don't. I don't think really mo my grandmother used this word. I don't really hear y modern people using this word much anymore. I'm pretty um, sure. Okay. What's that? I'm pretty sure that nobody in the UK used it because I typed it. It was I see a description close to it. It was United States only. Ah well, I'm from the United States, and that so, yeah. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, it's uh, okay. Let me try to explain. Thanksgiving, uh, Americans like to eat a big dinner. The uh, main entree, the main meat, the main part of the meal is, of course, turkey, as you may know. Uh, it would be very common to say, I'm going to my grandmother's house. We're going to have turkey and all the fixings. By that, you can't have turkey without all the things that go with it mashed potatoes and gravy and cranberry sauce and uh, bread dressing or stuffing uh, squash um, uh, a boiled seasoned squash uh, all of these things that go with a turkey dinner, I, it would be blasphemy to have a Thanksgiving dinner without all the fixings. There, That's the fun part. So uh, it refers to food that goes with a certain dish. Um, not, not to be mistaken with um, condiments, which is another word. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I get a pizza, I like to have some condiments with it. In the United States, we have Parmesan cheese that you can things you can put on top to add, but small things. Um, Parmesan cheese. Uh, we use red chili pepper flakes in the United States to put on. Uh, maybe. Uh, you say topping. Toppings. Toppings, okay, something else. Toppings is like the pepperoni, uh, the mushrooms and onions and all that. I would like three toppings. I would like pepperoni, mushrooms, and onions, for example. That's not the condiments. Condiments are things like mustard and ketchup and um, uh, maybe hot sauce. Uh, Things that you like to put on after and individuals like to put on. I like a lot of hot sauce. I put hot sauce on pizza and I like a lot, but my wife doesn't like very much. She likes just like one drop. I shake the bottle several times, but uh, that's just me. But anyway, those are condiments. Fixings are side dishes. There you go. That's the best. Side dishes that commonly or that uh, purposefully um, are served with a specific dish. Uh, has anybody here had samgopsal, a Korean dish? Yummy. No. Okay, well, you should, there's one you should try. Yeah, um, 
and the Chinese uh, cross um, bridge noodles, which is very famous in Yunnan province, because they usually they give you a, a you know hot pot, then give you chicken soup inside ah. hot hot pot, then right. give you lots of you know small small side dishes, then you can put the right. uh, you know egg inside, everything inside, cook yourself. <laughs> right. So, so I so with a hot pot or samgyeopsal, I, I would say okay, you have your your meat that you use, your main meat or meats, and all the fixings. So all the other things that you can eat with it, onions and garlic and uh, the lettuce and all the other things uh, that you can add into it, or that okay. are traditionally uh, served with it. Yeah. What it has something because it was like try to point out not only the because there was a second definition try to point out more like a pots something that we um, you know uh, mm -hmm. the bottle that contains something but that was the second definition so I'm not sure if it was a mistake or not that I don't know and I don't understand and I've never heard it used that way I have heard fixings used to talk about things that fix. If you fix something to something else, attach it, like a hinge on a door attaches the door, right? I've heard <clears throat> I've heard things, springs, or things that are used to attach one thing to another referred to as fixings. That has nothing to do with pots or kitchen utensils. Right, I, I, I realize I that. But. I see this page. It is more maybe it, maybe it has nothing to do with the um, with the pots. It is like devices. Ah yes, yes. It can be devices um, that are used to attach something to another something to something else. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wow. We're, we're, this class went by fast. I always know it's a good class when the class goes by in like five minutes. Whoa, I look at the clock. Oh, it's almost over. Uh, Luo, uh, I want to give you another shot. Take a, take a, can you describe something simple in a couple minutes? Um, yeah, um, I'd like to describe how to brew beer briefly. Excellent. Mm, Okay, first you should prepare the all ingredients like malt and yeast and hops. And you should buy some equipment. Or if, if you don't want to buy professional equipment, you can use some uh, common equipment in your kitchen. And uh, in the kitchen, firstly, you should uh, uh, smash your malt into the small green. And uh, meanwhile, you boil your... Um, uh, water. You boil water with some uh, tank or some something like that with a uh, pot, and uh, you boil the water and uh, you prepare another uh, container and uh, you pour the boiled water into the another container. It's a fil it's a filter. Um, this container also is a filter, and uh, meanwhile you gradually put the uh, green malt green into the. Uh, next container, I mean the filter, and uh, you stir it meanwhile. And this is a, a heat, uh, heat in solution container. So to make sure in the one hour the temperature wouldn't uh, go down to uh, two degrees in Celsius. So you make sure your water in this container are maintained in uh, 178 Celsius degrees uh, in one hour. And after one hour, um, you filter the uh, liquid liquid out of the, this container, um, and you put them in <laughs> another pot, um, probably the first one. And then then you boil it again. And the, in the beginning, you boil it, you add some yeast in it. Uh, no, 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 not yeast. Yeah, hops, hops in it. Hops. And uh, yeah, hops. And after uh, when you uh, end of the boiling, you uh, add the another half po po portion of the hops in it, and you uh, you uh, you cooler it, co cooling it quickly with the cooler, and to make sure the temperature go down to the uh, 30 degrees quickly as soon as quickly because you don't want any bacteria 
uh, growing in the uh, in between the uh, 30 degrees and uh, the boil boil temperature, and uh, um, when the temperature uh, went down to the uh, uh, 30 degrees, you can uh, you can pour them into another tank, which you des design to uh, ferment them and add the yeast in activated yeast into it, and uh, um, wait for probably uh, half and half months, and <laughs> you have yep. your own beer. Yeah, excellent. Okay, uh, we're definitely over time. So one couple quick things: a uh, couple Celsius uh, degree, two degrees, two Celsius degrees. We normally say two degrees Celsius or thirty degrees Fahrenheit. So we say degrees, and then whichever type of measurement we're using. Sounds like I use a little, lot of pots. And yeah. one one thing I've never un ever understood in my life, what is the there's always activated yeast, but is there really a deactivated yeast? If there is, I've yeah. never seen it. There yeah, is a deactivated little yeast like a uh, powder or some uh, some in the tube, you some liquid in the tube. Um, no. But you should activate beforehand um, when you trying to brew your own beer. Okay. Ah, okay, I get it. Okay, uh, we are over time. Uh, I have to go. Thank you for joining me. Terrific job, everyone. Um, very good, and uh, thank you very much for joining me. See you next time on Verbling. Goodbye. Bye for now. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.